It's Wednesday. Uh, thank you, Zardoz, so much for the resubscription. I hope everybody is doing well. It is weird not streaming on Tuesday and then... Well, and then obviously, we didn't have a, a Dune stream yesterday. So I, I, I feel like I've been gone for so long. I'm so used to streaming more. All right, so we're gonna let's do some Warhammer today. I've been looking at videos and information. Hello, Eridinsk. You didn't miss much because we had audio troubles, uh, but, but everything is fixed now. So was, I've been looking at videos on how to magnetize knights and all the different things that you can do. And the, believe me when I tell you, there are a lot of things that you can do with these things. Oh, Aerodensk, I, I, I'm sure I'm sure you'll think of something. So one thing that we talked about before is that there are different ways that you can attach the upper body to the lower body for customization, articulation, whatever you want to call it. Because essentially you see that there's there's this little peg that sticks up here, right? And then on the bottom here, there's just a, a hole that's much bigger than this. And you can see inside there, it just sits in there, but it, it can move all around. So what some people do is some people cut that off and put a magnet in its place. Some people put a magnet on top of that. And then depending on what you do there, in here, you can attach a piece of sprue or something across the top with a magnet on it, or there are various different things. What I realized, though, is that with this speaker piece that I attached here, uh, it's very front heavy. So it falls forward, which isn't terrible to have a knight that's sort of, you know, leaning forward a little bit. But it's definitely going to hinder what I can do as far as what a magnet is going to be able to do there to hold it in place. So what I think I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to glue it, use a ton of glue, make sure it's set so that it can be um, erect a little bit, not falling down forward. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, then when we get to the arms, which we're going to start looking at today, there are, again, there are a lot of ways to customize it, uh, to use magnets, to use plastic card and tubes, all sorts of stuff. So we'll talk about that as we go. Now, the other thing I need to figure out is I made this boombox style, uh, there we go, top. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I could I could try to do magnets in there, but, and again, like, people people also do magnets in the, here in the torso for, uh, for travel, so they can take it apart, and it's not, like, one giant thing that they have to fit somewhere. Um, but, I, you know, honestly, I... I think just gluing it, it will be fine. I, I don't need it to move and to come on and off. Hello, Emily. So we've got the boombox pod. Um, I do need to figure out how I'm going to essentially finish it. So if I'm going... Right, exactly, Zardoz. Night number two. Oh, so many more nights in that are planned. So I have to figure out here what I'm going to do as far as, like, if I want to do something to cover up cover up these gaps or I mean, what a lot of people say would be green stuff so maybe I'll do that you know mix up some green stuff is is essentially a putty that dries and when it dries it is rock hard like cement so I could put some green stuff there and then try to smooth it out and then let it dry and then of course you know you can sand it down and all that other stuff um, but I do need to do some sort of finishing work around around the outsides here Do I have a bunch of spare sensor modules off of marine tanks? I don't. Most of uh, most of my marine, my space marines tanks and things, uh, I got secondhand. <laughs> so I don't. I've only built a couple. 
But I have various little bits and pieces that I can try to cut up and stick on there. I, so I, I, I might have parts to do it. But we don't need to do that now because it would be kind of boring. The other thing is, though, also when I was looking at just just this piece over sort of overbalancing it to the front, I had the thought, well, oh man, what happens... What happens when I build arms with these? These pieces are really, really heavy. And now I'm thinking, what, how are the, I'm not sure how these are gonna work with the weight. Not sure how that's gonna work. Um, not giving up yet, we're gonna still try, but these are really heavy and to have arms that I could swap in and out, I don't know. I don't know how this is gonna how this is gonna work, but we'll see. We'll try to figure it out. Uh, alternately, I could do something where these sit on the arms, but then there's something else that's anchoring it back over the top. that could be part of it so like I just put it on or a further thing is I could potentially do something with um, do something with the base have some sort of rubble or terrain that kind of that these rest on a little bit to kind of cheat a little bit to hold the weight so there yeah or as Zarda is saying like I could really reinforce the arms with magnets. So I have options. We're not quite at that point yet, but something to think about as we go. Oh, and I did add some more uh, pieces to the other assembly. Because that's just cool. Alright. So what does that leave us with for today? Well, as you remember, this kit comes with all of these different weapons not each one is different but they're um, they're sort of mix and match yeah and Zardoz that's another thing I was thinking so I, I think my best bet just overall is just really gluing the body together making sure that's really secure And, I'm, and I can do that before any painting happens, because even like this, I, there's, there's not much you can't get into right there, so that's fine. Yeah, what I'll probably do is, I mean, I'll just, I'm, I'll just super glue it. A lot, what some people do with these things again, especially with load bearing parts is that not only do they glue, but they'll also use green stuff essentially as glue, as putty to hold things together as well. So I might might do that. So the idea is we're gonna build all of these things except for that. Don't need that last thing. Counterweights. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, pinning it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that wouldn't be. Well, okay. I'm not an expert at pinning, but what I guess what I would do is I would drill a hole straight down into here. Put a piece of metal that goes up, and then essentially I could do that. And then not only fill that with glue, but also anchor the whole metal post. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so what I was saying. <laughs> We've got... Right, we'll... <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll mess up all that stuff when we get there. Uh, so we have melee arms. There's the the gauntlet. And then there's the giant chainsword. And then a bunch of guns. 
So ideally, we want to make this so that they're all interchangeable as well as interchangeable with however we figure out the speaker system. So that's the idea. But for that, we need to get building. Oh, yeah, no, uh, no old world anything. That was not mentioned. But they tell us it's coming. All right. There's a lot that goes into these weapons. It's a little daunting. But we'll make it work. Now, I believe that the... So we've got Reaper Chainsword, Thunderstrike Gauntlet. So we need to build both of these. And they share the same upper body. So this is where you do a magnet so that you can swap them out. But I also want to do the upper arm. All right, so that's simple. That's just these pieces here, which again, I think that's the universal piece. All right, we'll figure this out. We will figure it out. Let's cut out some pieces. Because I want to see especially what these upper upper arm assemblies look like. So for this arm, yeah, so 96 and 90. So I need to find those. And those should be pretty big. Ah, like these. So we've got 90 and 96. All right. And then I assume the other ones are for the other side. That would be handy. Oh, did you all see the, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the stats, well, the preview stats for her name the the new lady in charge of the sisters of battle she is a beast i don't know point values or anything yet but um she's awesome i like sisters of battle stuff i actually have a friend of mine, his uh, his whole Sisters of Battle army is here in my house. You may have seen it used on Grim Dark Dawn. One day I might even have to give it back to him. And that's all old sisters too. None of the none of the new plastic stuff. Classic. Oh, we had Warhammer on Hyper on Monday. So thanks for everybody who was able to tune into that. Always a good time. All right, so this goes like that. Essentially, you put the arm mount in there, and then this just locks on like that, right? So do I glue the next part, or no, I don't, well, I glue this around that part, I think. Which way does it go? This way. Oh, I see, because there's a little thing that plugs in there. Interesting. But now, if I want to swap out, okay, hold on. How do I? Is the upper arm is that a universal joint, or are there different ones for the guns? Oh, I'm so confused. Okay, if this page is for. I 
right, that's part 92. So what is this part over here? 97, 92. The upper arm, okay, all right. So I do, gl okay, hold on. <laughs> let me get my parts and then we'll figure out how it goes together. I think I understand now though. I think I got it. Yeah, so technically on Hyper, it was the same story as the previous week uh, because we, that, that game was a little bit truncated, but, um, it was it was a lot of fun very silly good action lots of good chaos stuff happening chaos with a small c okay so this is the upper arm uh you glue the housing so that this can rotate in and out and then as far as magnets go from what I've seen mainly is you just stick a big old magnet on the bottom of this one. Yeah, it looks like it can go about, and then yeah, the arm can go extend out about that far. <laughs> exactly, Emily. All, all caps chaos, but just with a, a lowercase c. Okay, so I am going to glue this together, but then also what I think happens is that you don't, that this one, it just sort of, it locks in, so you don't ever have to glue that. You could put a magnet in there, I suppose, if, again, for weight issues to balance the arm, but that should be pretty easy. And then, yeah, I think you just put a magnet on the bottom of, of here. I think, look, it looks, it looks good, looks right. I mean, I'm sure you can tell if you watch Warhammer streams on Hyper, but I get a really big kick out of, uh... oh wait, I need to put on a little support strut before I glue this. That is part number 91. I bet I probably don't even need that, but let's do it. I get a really big kick out of the uh, chat incentives that annihilate the board and decimate all the units. And I do love getting a good reaction from Naeem when I, when I always suggest, let's have it increase the damage that it does. Let's have it damage everybody. I don't know that's that that's always Naeem's first idea for things cuz it does destroy <laughs> a lot of whatever story he had going but it's just so much fun. Okay, so then there's this little guy. What happens is this goes here and that plugs in Oh, that's cool. So it's a, I don't know if this is TOS, but, uh, so you got a piston there, so it goes in and out. Oh, yeah. We'll just do that for a while. <laughs> but that's interesting, because I really got to make sure I don't glue that on there. Hmm. Okay. Cool. I mean, it's just so much fun when there are sandworms or windstorms blowing up the whole board. I, just, I love that stuff. Right. 
Ooh, no, stay in there. Stay in there. Okay, there we go. Make sure we can still do our thrust in as it as it sets. <laughs> yeah, it is says I think Naeem has learned not to expect too much story. I mean, truth be told, and this, this is obvious for anybody who's been watching. If you if you watched Grim Dark Dawn before, you can tell. Wait, did I put that on upside down? Nah, it doesn't matter. Uh, no. Clearly, on these Warhammer streams that we've been doing. Oh, I I I got it. I got it. It's here. It's here. I appreciate it, Emily. I see you. Um, clearly with these games, we're, it's a little bit story light. It's, we're not doing anything nearly, you know, the scope of Grim Dark Dawn. Uh, there have been some, you know, recurring characters and things like that, but it's not as, uh, it, we're not trying to do a Grim Dark Dawn with just, you know, a couple of people in the studio, because that, that would be a lot for them. All right, so again, you see here, it's got these notches that attach like that, and then you turn it, and then we've got we've got a shoulder. So cool. And yeah, that's you can tell that there's that it stays because there's there's enough friction in there. And again, when inevitably when even just with primer, that's going to add a little bit of extra surface to everything. So this will you know, basically fit on even better. All right, cool, 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 cool. All right, this is great. I love this. Let's do the other side. I am excited. Oh, let me get yeah, Aaron and, and um, you know, they're they have fun with it, which is great. I don't think. And you know, I mean, let's let's be honest. The Warhammer shows do well on Hyper, which is cool. Makes me happy to see that. I don't know that they ever anticipated that they'd be, you know, successful with Warhammer, especially as much as it is. But um, I think it's cool. <laughs> Oh, and we talked about it on Monday, so if you didn't see, um, there's, so this weekend is the the Scott Porter Heroclix event that's going on, so if you go to any of his social media, you can find it. I think it's, I'm trying to remember the name of the website, is it Heroclix for Huntington's? I think that's the name of it, not exactly sure, but there's a, it's, it's crazy, all the stuff they're doing. It's a fully official event, uh, official with WizKids, and there are, it's all virtual, nobody's showing up in person, but there are battle royales that you can play in, again, online, there are championships, and there's there are auctions, there are raffles, just a ton, a ton of stuff. And as they revealed, one of the exclusive items that you can get, and again, this is, it's something you can just purchase, which is a donation to the charity, um, and you can also win one that's a slightly different version, but they made an official, fully usable, fully functional uh, Heroclix map of the Hyper Studio. Now... As life turns out, this is now the previous studio, not the current studio, uh, although it's you know one door over and it's similar, but um, it's super cool. And it was just it was a, a way that Scott could commemorate all of the um, unboxings that he's done at Hyper because that's where he films them. Uh, if you were not aware, and yeah, uh, I 
I was blown away when I saw that, that was happening. I think that's super cool. So last night I went on and bought mine. It's not super cheap, but the money goes to, to a great charity, so I'm all for that. And yeah, like I said, so if you look online, uh, it's, I mean, it, well, I guess, <laughs> I guess for most people, it, it just looks like a, looks like a building, but I'm like, I, I was there, so I, it does look like the actual studio, which is cool. Um, and again, the only difference between the one that you can buy, I think the one that you can buy has like a blue border around it, and then the ones that you can win during the weekend. Black Cavaliers, thank you so much for seven months. My goodness. I know it's crazy. Uh, and I think the one you can win has like a gold border and Scott signing some of them. Peg junk as well. 12, mo 12 months. Peg junk. It's wild. Wild. Thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate it. I know. <laughs> it's, been, it's been quite the year. <laughs> More than a year, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, I bought bought my map, so hopefully it'll be getting here at some point. Maybe, you know, maybe I'll do more hero clicks on stream if I can get somebody to come on here and play with me. Come on, Glue. But yeah, really cool stuff. I don't know how much of the, the weekend activities I'll be able to actually participate in. I've got a pretty busy weekend. Um, but I'll definitely be on there and donating and helping support Scott and the cause. And they've got some really incredible uh, prizes and things in the um, in the auction. For the first time ever, they're actually offering um, you can basically there are I think there are a couple of these that you can win through one way or another. But essentially, um, a, a Heroclix sculptor will sculpt you as a Heroclix figure, and they'll do it on a base where you can switch it out with any base that has a switchable character on it, uh, so you can play yourself in uh, Heroclix as anybody you want, essentially. Uh, let me show you what that means. So there are a number of figures that have what are called switch clicks bases. And essentially, the figure pops off. So you can swap out different sculpts if you have different versions of characters. Uh, so if I, so say I made a figure of myself, I could pop this one off and I could be Angel for the day. Or whatever else. I think the only caveat they said is that uh, they're not going to paint it for you for, you know, like copyright issues. If you wanted to make yourself look like Superman, uh, they'll sculpt it, but they ain't going to paint it. <laughs> but again, super cool. You know, obviously, WizKids and HeroClix have, has access to some incredible sculptors. Uh, Peg Jung says, I saw Playmates is making a TMNT versus Cobra Kai. Well, I had, did not hear about that. Over the last almost decade, I guess? No, it hasn't it hasn't even been that long. <clears throat> so for, for the longest time, Playmobil, um, like, officially was there, like, official policy that they did not do licensed products and then no, oh, I guess it's been about a decade because they started with some sports things and then they expanded into some animation and now psh, sky's the limit with all their Ghostbusters stuff and other things so yeah now Playmobil is much more much more open to to uh, licensed properties yeah, Black Cavalier. I mean, it's, you know, the the map does... It's not like it has the address on it, and it's it's a little bit... Um, it's not one-to-one, -one, like, what the actual building is. 
So I guess there's still enough um, anonymity, even so. It would be funny though if there was if you like zoomed in and there was a little uh, a little you know panel on the front of the building that had the address. <laughs> Don't do that. All right, so look at that. Look at that. You see the pistons? That's cool. Love it. Okay, cool. So we've got upper arms. <clears throat> and again, we'll um, we'll figure out what kind of magnets to put on those. And then if if everything goes as planned, the magnets that go in the actual arm weapons themselves are recessed so it'll cover up when you put them together. But as, as people have noted, because uh, they do this kind of magnet, magnetization even on the little knights, the armigers slash war dogs, uh, even if you had this and there was an arm underneath it, and there was another, and even if you had a magnet here that was not covered up, so it was, an, it would essentially just be another, another flat disc in the arm assembly. And once you painted it, you really wouldn't know that that was, you know, another a magnet. It would just look like another level of arm detail. So, not the worst thing in the world. Uh, does it come with Zach Malika, Lucas, and Kaiju bystander token? That would be cool. I mean, I suppose on those you you could make those yourself. All right. So now we're going to look at. The weapons. So now here too, I need to be careful about which parts go with which thing. Oh, and I should say that one of the one of the big prize items, prize raffle, whatever uh, this weekend, is there are official. Officially licensed, officially part of the game, but there are bystander tokens of Scott Porter that you can use in the game. Yeah, Zardoz, I've been watching videos and reading things about the guns, so I think I'm going to do... I think I'm going to start with the, the melee weapons. And it looks like they don't share... They don't share any parts, which that makes it nice. Yeah, just looking at, so we've got the chainsword and the gauntlet, but they're completely different builds, even up to the, the lower arm assembly are different parts. Cool, good. That makes my life a little bit easier. Just a little. All right, where do we start? Okay, we start with the big old chain sword itself. Let's do that. Are there enough Scots and Heroclix? Um, probably. There are a, there are a fair amount of Scots out there. I mean, obviously we've got Cyclops, Scott Summers, we've got um, what other Scots are there? Drawing a blank. Where's my book? I keep thinking. <laughs> my brain keeps wanting to say Alan Scott, but that's that's a different kind of Scott. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, Scott Free, Mr. Miracle. There are no Scott Pilgrim hero clicks, although that's something that people often ask about, for sure. Okay, I need part number 29, which is some sort of a, another piston. There we go. There's Scotty from Star Trek. Does that count? Montgomery Scott? Right, yes, yes. 
despite, <laughs> despite, man. Hero clicks. Let me say, is another very interesting community. Very interesting. Uh, there are good people, and not so good people. The game has been going on now for almost 20 years. It's a long time. It's a long time for people to get really invested in their tiny plastic figures. And being experts in a game. And then, God forbid, WizKids wants to change things and, you know, come out with new additions and make the games easier. Game easier for people to learn and get into. And oh man, do some people not like that. <laughs> and every time something new happens, it's, you know, it's the end of the world and this isn't my game anymore and I'm getting rid of my figures and ugh. And come on. I can't stand that stuff. Also, just because a new edition comes out, if you and your grognard buddies can't stand the new edition, then play the old one. They're not coming into your house and taking away your old rule book. But that's the that is the trick. Right, and Black Cavalry, yeah, exactly. But that's the thing. All of these all of these old let's face it, they're old white men. Uh, they get so upset about a new edition coming out because they like the old edition. They all play the new edition. They just bitch and complain about it, but they're all going to do it. Clearly, again, they could go and play the old one, but they're not going to. They're going to play the new one just like everybody else. Suck it up. Snowflakes. <laughs> I have thoughts. Yeah. Oh my god, so much so much gatekeeping. There are a bunch of good guys in the HeroClix community too though. You know, as with as with everything there's a, a mix. But it is interesting though, because with HeroClix, if you're not familiar with its history, uh, the game started out and it was WizKids was a branch of the company Tops for a while. It's complicated, but for for a long while, it was, like I said, it was part of Tops, which is a company you probably know best for making uh, sports cards, like baseball cards, things like that. And then at one point, a number of years ago, Tops was like, eh, we don't want to be in the business of making superhero miniatures anymore. And they dropped it. And everybody freaked out. End of hero clicks. I mean, it was. I mean, there was there was no there was no hero clicks for for a little while, and um, it became this big question: what's going to happen? There were a couple of different parties that were going to try to take over the assets and continue it. Uh, some of the some of the former employees were going to try to buy it themselves. Uh, there was a briefly they were trying to make make their own thing called Pinata Games, uh, that ended up not working out. But thankfully, NECA, that the action figure. I mean, they make a bunch of stuff, but mainly action figures. Uh, that company bought the assets, bought WizKids, and then reinstituted WizKids as a subsidiary of NECA, which is where we've now been for a, a number of years already. But um, yeah, so there's this whole lore to Hero Clicks about that time, which was only, I mean, it was less than a year, but still, I mean, that was already a game that had been going on for years and then was just gone with, again, for months and months, there was no real idea if it would ever come back and what form it would be. So looking back on that time, that's it's known as the hiatus, uh, and it was a, a very tense time for a lot of people. 
So, but because of that, uh, during that time, there were websites devoted to hero clicks and uh, you know the big forum that were sort of keeping the game alive and trying to continue to drum up interest for it so that you know whatever company would be looking at buying it would see that you know there's that this is something that people actually want and we'll we'll put more money into if we uh, if we do it further so because of that there are there are a lot of people in the community that are genuinely like supportive and uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for you good people let's put it that way but and then there are chuds as well okay so this gigantic chain sword uh, essentially I just have to not get any glue near this piston so just like before but otherwise glue the whole thing and then hold it down until it all dries and then there's a little fuel tank that goes on the outside but I do that afterwards Come on. Yeah, and recently WizKids has done some things that have bothered some people because they fear change. Stay. They changed the scale of the figures. The figures got a little bit bigger, which of course means that I can't play my old figures anymore. Well, of course you can. There's a new rules set out now. Just came out. But again, it's mostly people who just fear change. Okay, how am I going to hold this? Good. Yeah, <laughs> exactly as Zara does. Uh, yeah, first time. Yeah, every this, with uh, Hero Clicks is certainly not the first game to undergo uh, issues like this and growing pains and evolutions over the years and things to get in new people that bother old people. You know, it's it's yeah, same old, same old. Okay, well this one, this looks super straightforward, at least for this arm, which is great. Uh, yeah, and then, yeah, Battletech and Heroclix, we all, we all, we have, uh, uh, what's his face? To thank. Jordan Weissman. That's the name I was looking for. So after this, like I said, there's just there's a fuel tank that goes on the side, and then um, a couple of little bracket kind of things, and then this arm is done. And then of course the attachment that I will need to put a magnet in to magnet to the top. Now the other arm, the gauntlet, is a bit more complicated, uh, mainly because it has all, all the fingers that you have to assemble individually. It looks cool when it's all done though. The tricky part is the linkage when the arm connects to the joint, Zarda says. Yeah, that looks like it's maybe a little bit fiddly. All right, I think this is good. Looks Everything looks flush. Cool. And we got, look at that. We got a big old chainsaw. Chainsaw sword. Vroom, vroom. Now, you'll note that some of the weapons, well, almost every, mm, every weapon except for one, technically, can be interchanged on either side of the knight. The arm, I think, is the only one that can't switch places. Although I don't know about the preceptor weapon, that might, that might be fixed. Oh, no, that should be switchable also. <clears throat> so you see that both sides are fully detailed so you could put it on either side depending on the loadout and where you want things to go and how you want it to look vroom, 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 vroom. 
Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Let's keep it going with a fuel tank. Now there are a bunch of fuel tanks for the different arms and weapons and everything's got fuel or power or something. Those are usually pretty good details. I think this one goes on first. I mean, excuse me, uh, Promethium tanks, usually. Don't mind the, the sounds of the Xenos children playing in the other room. So I have another project that I'm working on. This is a, it's a minor thing. But you know how when I have guests on, especially on the my Saturday war room stream, which is coming back this Saturday. I promise, mostly. So I'll talk about, like, how did you get into Warhammer? What's your favorite army and why? All that kind of stuff. What I want to do is I want to be able to talk to people who are not super into Warhammer, maybe yet, and... I want to figure out a way to talk to somebody and to figure out what would be an ideal faction for that person. So what I need is I need some sort of a... Don't jinx it. <laughs> uh, like a, like a, a decision tree or... Something like that. So I found there are, some of these do exist. Um, they're typically more humorous than useful. Uh, fit to screen. So that I, I just recently came across this one. Somebody posted this in the... Yeah, it could be a quiz. So somebody posted this in the uh, Hyper Discord. And I, I apologize. I don't remember exactly who it was. Uh, so there's this one. It's probably too small for you to read. This one is a little bit humorous, but actually I kind of like it. Because the humor in it is basically just like the wordings of things. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll post this in the Discord so we can all look at it. Because again, it is it's, it's very small and complex. I'm not sure even if this one is fully up to date. It is a messy flowchart. Uh, it does work, though. I've, I've gone through a couple of paths. But I want something like this. So if I had on somebody cool who plays games but is not familiar with Warhammer, uh, we, could, like, we could do this as like a fun activity, right? So if I had on someone like Hector... Hector doesn't know anything about Warhammer, but I think he'd be willing to listen and talk about it. And I thought, it, again, I thought it would be a fun thing to be able to like say, okay, we're going to go through, yeah, we're going to go through a, a thing and we're going to figure out what is your ideal faction. You know, that obviously, partly humorous. I'm not locking anybody into <laughs> to buying and playing anything, but... Um, so anyway, like I said, I'll share that image and um, I'd love for anyone's opinion on it. And again, if your opinion, both if you are a Warhammer expert as well as if you are not. What it would, you know, what you use the GW catalog. Yeah, I mean, there's that, but I want to be able, It that's also really daunting though, is just to show somebody, okay, look at all of these pictures and what do you like? And also, that doesn't give any that doesn't give somebody totally new 
any of the lore behind it, which I think is really important, at least a little bit. Do you like painting gold? That's they. That's a good question. That that should be on there. So yeah, if anybody wants to give me your thoughts, your advice, I'd love to hear it. Because yeah, like I said, I think that would be a cool thing to... A cool and fun thing to be able to do with people who are new to this whole thing. Alright, we've got more pipes and hoses and fiddly things. Where does this one go? Oh, it goes like that. I see. That's cool. I'll also need pictures. Yeah, because obviously you do want the pictures as well to show what, you know, what the heck these things are. Okay, we got one of those. That's good. Yeah, again, Zardoz, I, and again, for, so I have talked about this before. I love talking about this, in fact. That there are multiple ways you can get into Warhammer, depending on what you're most interested in. And it, any way you want to get in is totally reasonable, totally cool. You can get in by wanting to know, hey, what's the most powerful thing in the meta right now? I don't suggest that, but if that's the way you want to be, that's cool. Uh, you can get in by aesthetics of the army, which is basically what Zardoz, or yeah, what Zardoz is talking about. That's totally fine. But I think there are definitely people, and again, Hector is one of the people who comes to mind, that he, yes, aesthetics are going to be interesting for him, but I definitely think he's going to want to know, well, wait, who are these, who are these people? What do they do? Yeah. Uh, definitely going to want to know the lore to decide what um, what faction to get into. All right, this one. Okay. What is he? <laughs> the Salamander's faction of Ultraman. That's good. Man, a lot of a lot of interesting activity with Warhammer. YouTubers. I don't mind talking about what other people are doing. Guy and Penny over at Midwinter Minis, they have their twins. So that's exciting. So I don't know how many I don't know how many videos we'll be seeing from them in the coming months. But they they're they clearly have been working on banking some content before the babies arrived, which is smart. Actually, they he talked about in the the announcement video that he was working with some other uh, some other YouTubers to make some content. So that should be interesting to see what they come up with there. So what what goes there? Anything? Hmm. That's weird. I guess there's just a, an empty hole over there. No. Oh, peg junk. I'm sorry. That. Uh, so yes, in the Space Marines, there are a number of chapters. Originally, they were legions. Now they're chapters. Uh, yes, as Arda says, they are. They love fire and heat. They come from a world that is. Uh, super volcanic. Everything's everything's volcanoes there. Donuts for all. Thank you so much for the follow. I love your name and I love donuts. We are we're we're working on a night, doing a lot of talking. Uh, the uh, yeah salamanders are they wear green armor, often decorated with dragon and scales and fire. Uh, they have some rules that make them particularly good at weapons that burn things there's 
Okay. There's a lot of problematic stuff in Warhammer. Uh, technically, salamanders have black skin. Now, they don't have brown skin. They have black skin, like jet black skin. Uh, because of the world and the radiation and blah, 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 uh, all these things. Um, however, and because a lot of, I'll always give you the problematic stuff and explain all this. When it comes to diversity in the Warhammer universe, uh, certain people will often point to, well, look, you've got, you know, you've got salamanders because they're black people, but, um, but they're not. They just have, yeah, there's, they have jet black skin, uh, but they have Caucasian features, so they're not, it's not exactly blackface, but it's, you could describe it that way. Uh, but it, but beyond that, those problematic issues just in the, in the universe, uh, salamanders are freaking awesome. They are one of the... When you talk about how there are no good guys in Warhammer 40k, salamanders specifically come about as close as you can get to like genuine good guys. Their Primarch Vulcan uh, was slash is, uh, <laughs> depending on if he comes back, which he could, uh, like a just genuinely super nice guy uh, looking out for other people and... So yeah, salamanders, super cool. I have nothing against salamanders. <laughs> Ultramarines, eh. Yeah, there are some factions in the game that have lightning stuff. There's also, there's a lot of lightning iconography on the, on the custodes. Sorry about the, uh, no, no, now there are tears. Uh, donuts for all. Do I have any tips for new mini painters? Um, I mean, yeah, there's, I would say that depending on how new you are, if this is like your first time about to paint a miniature, or if you've done a little bit of practice, there are a lot of really good tutorials on the internet, on YouTube. Uh, Games Workshop itself has a million. So if you go to the, the Games Workshop YouTube channel, um, you can get it through their app. There's a really good app that Games Workshop has. It's called, uh, what do they call it? I don't even remember. Hold on, let me find it, because it's really good. Oh, not that one. It is... The Citadel Color app, or yeah, so it looks like that. Citadel Color, uh, highly recommend this for anybody who's painting. Uh, well, hey, look, bagels are great too, uh, but it has all sorts of stuff where you can get advanced guides, and this has videos and all sorts of cool stuff. Or again, you can just go to their YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, Citadel Paints or Citadel Color, whatever they call it currently. Um, but that one's really good because, again, not only do they have, like, super expert painters, uh, but they go through a ton of different techniques. They'll show you how to paint specific factions in the game, but it's, you know... If you want to paint a miniature red, you know, you could watch something about world eaters, but then apply that to any red miniature you want to do, essentially. So I highly recommend Games Workshop videos, especially... Some slightly older ones with Duncan. Um, Peachy and the other guys are great, but... Um, I mean, come on. Duncan is really the, the cream of the crop. Um, and then, otherwise, it's just... There are a lot of like really specialized techniques, but you can also just, just practice and find out what works for you. I also highly recommend, once it's safe, and if you live in a place and or if you live in a place where it is safe, um, see if your local... Games Workshop store or Warhammer store or independent comic book game store 
Uh, if they have any painters there who can offer you tips, uh, I found it for me personally, taking a class in person, uh, that made the, a, the world of difference to me and my ability to paint. I took, literally I took one class with a very, very good painter. Um, and after that, I, it's just been a matter of practicing what I learned there and what I've seen on videos. And I'm not an amazing painter, but I'm decent when I have, <laughs> when I have the time that I can put into it. And again, I, I really credit that, that one class that I did. Uh, okay, cool. So we've got the chain sword. The arm goes together like this. So again, we've got piston action, which actually looks really cool. And so yeah, what the, the deal is, so right here you see that there's that there's a pretty big open space inside. Now, traditionally, you would attach this housing around this, so this would be inside, so you can't, so it would attach around like that. But instead of doing that, we're gonna do magnets. Oh, so that's what it is. Okay, no. So they actually, what a lot of people do is they cut this off and put a magnet here so that, and then the magnet goes inside down in there so that the magnet on this part actually goes into that housing. And so the magnets happen inside. Yes. That's the way to do it. Okay. Cool. So I can't glue any of this yet. All right. Got it. So I have to cut this off. So I'm going to need, I should get like a, a hobby saw for that. And then uh, get some magnets. Cool. Yes. I mean, look, I, I do have motivation to paint. I do like to paint. It's just, it's time and it's uh, energy is really what, what hinders me. Okay, so I'm going to find the right magnets for those. I'm going to work on cutting off that. Yes, now I cut this off no matter what, because for the guns, it'll also work the same way. Yeah, I think. <laughs> it should be the same thing, right? Yeah, and as Rabbit Walmart says, make mistakes, uh, practice, get some, you know, get some models get some miniatures that you don't care about a ton and practice on those. You can often find, again, at a, at a, a gate, not, not at a Warhammer store, but at any other store, you can find some cheap miniatures or seriously go online. eBay Reaper. Reaper has a billion super cheap miniatures they did kickstarters where people for a hundred dollars people got a thousand miniatures so there tons of those things are out there uh, you can pick up a bunch of them yeah so just practice 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 you don't need super specific name brand anything especially to practice you can just get you know paints from cheap acrylic paints from walmart or something and just practice with those Yeah, I'm just trying to see where. Okay, so it's this. Yeah, that has its own thing. Yeah, the guns are a whole. Guns are a whole other story for this. We'll uh, we'll get there. We will get there. All right. So how does this arm start? What's the first part that I do? Fingers. It looks like these pages are always fun. Okay, whoa. 
I do this, but that's on top of this. That arrow goes there. So yeah, I think you start, basically you start here and you work your way back up. Let's get some fingers. Giant robot fingers. Fingers and hand. All right, cool. Yeah, you can totally use just regular kind of stuff. I know people who use automotive paint. Gets you some interesting finishes and things. Oh, all right, that just popped right up. Uh, donuts, if you're interested in more of uh, more of our advice and talking to us about stuff and sharing things, you can join join our Discord. We're talking about just about everything in there, but hobby stuff, especially. And one day, one day I definitely want to do a, a Titan. Looking at those videos, and again, that, this, how does it work? So this hand, whoa. on a Titan, it's almost as big as my hand. <laughs> so it shows you the, uh, oh, yeah, uh, you can see uh, the, the command I just did, the, the, in in my chat it's just H B that brings up the the Discord info. I know people are used to writing out the whole thing. But yes, we are I am one of the home buddies. We're a group of cool people who stream lots of different kinds of content. And we do that during the week. And then on Saturday nights, we get together and do a group stream and do some really wacky, crazy content. This past Saturday, we watched videos about the biggest, most expensive house ever made, and it drove me crazy. This coming weekend, I think we're doing trivia, which you too can be a part of. Whether you want to be on the team of one of the home buddies or team chat. We do all sorts of cool stuff. My content is super geek related. I do mythology streams, reading and discussing on Mondays. Warhammer on Wednesdays. Look at toys and other models on Fridays. Do another Warhammer stream on Saturday. Other stuff during the week. Oh, man, there was so much that was bad about that house. Oh. And yes, it still bugs me. I still think about it. <laughs> all right, so that's the hands. Now we got to do all the fingers, thumb and fingers. I don't want to arrange this the right way so I know which one goes where. All right, thumb, 53. We'll um, probably do this hand and then wrap it up for today. Now you can't, well, to a small extent, you can pose these fingers. Oh, I wonder if anybody actually magnetizes the fingers so that they can move. That'd be cool. Oh, yeah, Donut. So my, my Monday, Wednesday, Friday are 10 a.m. Pacific. <clears throat> Saturday, the Warhammer stream is at 2 o'clock Pacific. And the Home Buddies group stream every Saturday night is at 7 p.m. Pacific. But like I said, um, if you're, depending on where you are in the world, what your schedule is, uh, like I said, we have other home buddies who stream in the afternoon Pacific time, in the evening Pacific time, so there's uh, a lot going on out there. All right, so the fingers are 43, 44, 42. Perfect, because why would you do it in any other order? 
Uh, so they're in order on the sprue, at least, which is helpful. Sorry, I hit the camera. Oh, I got a new movie recommendation. Well, do I recommend it? I love the lists online that say things like, here are the top 10 weirdest movies on Netflix. Love those things. So I was looking at one of those lists. I don't remember exactly what the list was specifically, but I watched a movie that's currently on Amazon Prime or Prime Video, whatever they want you to call it these days. And the movie is called Climax. It is a French movie. I have trouble describing this movie because it was completely insane. I suppose the simplest explanation would be it's about a group it's about a, a dance troupe it's preparing for a tour and they're staying in a weird maybe abandoned school and stuff happens Oh, did they watch it on Hyper? Oh, interesting. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, it was, it's wild. It's a wild movie. A lot of it is like these really long single shots. There are a lot of really interesting dance performances in the movie, which is cool. There's some gross stuff that happens, so... Be on the lookout for that. Oh, that's that's interesting. I had no I had no idea they did that. Cool. And then I started a rewatch of Picard, on on what is now Paramount Plus. Okay, we've got fingers, and. Thumb. So the thumb I don't have to worry about. Um, no, I guess I do, because it fits inside a little bit. Now, how do they suggest? They suggest that the arm kind of hangs down. Ooh, that's really loose. Definitely going to have to lock that in there. Trying to see which ones have to go in in what order. Do they lock do the fingers lock together? Is that how this works? No? <laughs> okay. Alright, so they just kinda hover there and you do whatever you want. Now, essentially, you either have them kind of hanging open or a little bit close. There's not a ton of articulation you can do here. Uh, you, you, you wouldn't want to do it this way. First of all, it would look super weird. Your knight would just be like this. So they're just going to kind of be splayed out. Honestly, I think the best option for this might just to be just to put a bunch of glue in there. And then as it's setting, just kind of work it into where you want them to go. Just trying to figure out what the order is because obviously the thumb has to be locked in before the whole hand goes together but the fingers don't the fingers can just be stuck in after well that's pretty handy <laughs> get it handy <laughs> Okay. 
Come for the hobby and stay for the jokes. Hanging like this, we want it. Okay, that should work. Alright, finger number one, finger number two, finger number three. What would look most ominous with this hand? What do we think? Like that? So kind of curving in? Oh yeah, that's pretty cool. Like it's grasping. I like that. A Ferris Manus joke, yeah. Ugh. Oh, Ferris Manus. <laughs> Arguably the worst named Primark. Arguably. Okay, I like it. I like the hand like that. So hopefully, hopefully that dries and stays just like it is. Uh, I also, I, so I was watching, like I said, I, I watch a bunch of Warhammer YouTubers, uh, or I rather, I subscribe to a bunch of them. I sometimes watch some of their videos. No oh, stripe, yeah. Good, big, good old, thick robot hands and fingers. Uh, so tabletop titans. I know some of you are familiar with them. They're, uh, it's a team of three dudes. Two of whom are usually on camera. The, the other one's usually controlling things, although he's on there sometimes. They seem like really good guys. I, I, I don't know that much about them outside of their videos. Um, they've got what looks like a pretty good following. And I guess they have... They just posted a new video yesterday about a running joke that they have on their channel and in their community about essentially which... Primark, would you go out on a date with? Would you marry? That kind of stuff. And so they did a video where they sort of, it's a, it's basically like a clip show of all the times that they've talked about that on stream. And then, I don't know, they're going to do more with this in some way. There's a little bit of an intro as to sort of how that, how it came about. But I thought it was cool because it's, it's seemingly, and again, I, I, I haven't, I don't think I've ever seen this content on their stuff before. I've watched some of their videos before, but I usually don't watch their entire videos. Their their battle reports are quite long, very detailed. But um, it seems like it's all in good fun, and they're because I I believe they're both. I think the main guys I I know one of them is married. Uh, to a woman, I believe I I I think they're both, or all three of them maybe I think they're straight, but they they talk about this stuff. Without any, without, they don't make it weird because they're talking about dating and being in a relationship with male characters. Uh, and it's not, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's very, it's, it's put forward positively and fun. And I like that, that number one, I, I, I think it's good content. Um, I have my own, certainly, opinions on which. Uh, which Primarchs I would go out on a date with and want a relationship with. But um, but also like that they're comfortable doing that content with the current Warhammer overall community. Because uh, not every aspect of the Warhammer community would be comfortable with that kind of discussion um, and humor and banter. And again, it's not making fun of it. I don't know, I don't know if I'm explaining that quite well, but... I like. I thought it was. I thought it was funny. 
we could certainly have that discussion. You could certainly make a dating sim of the Primarchs. And have lots and lots to talk about there. <laughs> okay, so we have a hand. The hand will get an armor piece over the back of the hand. And then it will attach to an elbow joint. Well, I think the most interesting thing would be... Yeah, you'd have to break it down. Sort of like the, the F. Mary Kill scenario. You'd want to be a little bit specific. Because there are certain Primarchs I think would be... If we're talking... Okay. If we're talking a single date or a one-night stand or an ongoing relationship, I think you'll have different answers. So I think it would be, I think it would be better posed in that sort of a, a thing. Like, what are we talking about exactly? Because if, you, if you're doing, like, a, a single date, one-night stand thing, I mean, it's got to be Fulgrim. It's got to be. I mean, th there's no other answer for a, for a one-off experience. But if you're going for something long-term... Well, no, and that's... Aaron, Ar you bring up a good point. Because, yeah, not all of these answers necessarily have to do with, uh, with sexuality. There's certainly... Certainly some Primarchs are better conversationalists and are interested in different kinds of experiences than others. And it is, I mean, within the context of 40k, that's also something that makes Primarchs really interesting is because Space Marines are essentially asexual. I mean, their Games Workshop is very hesitant to get into the specifics of Space Marines, but we know that they cannot... Well, there's a, there's a line specifically in one of the books that uh, Fabius Bile says uh, that without tinkering, such as what he could do, uh, that space marines are sterile and they certainly don't seem to have any sort of sexual interest in others uh, until... Well, see, that's the thing, Aerodens. We like we don't actually know the details. They don't give us the details. We don't know if the process to become a space marine involves. I mean, we know it involves implanting implanting organs, changing all of your, uh, you know, hormones and the systems that are going on inside your body. But we don't know specifically if it just removes sex drive entirely. Do they remove parts? Like we, we just don't know. They don't give us that that level of detail. Um, yeah, but it's interesting. An interesting thought. And again, certain primarchs are more. Well, essentially, you could ascribe feelings. They don't. None of the primarchs really ever, you know, fall in love or have any sort of sexual relationships whatsoever. Anyway, but. You could infer or, like I said, you could ascribe feelings to some of them if you wanted to. Yeah, <laughs> Savage Punch, that's an excellent point, yes. Uh, Vulcan, Vulcan will be there for you forever. Okay. Like I said, I will post the that flow chart for picking a 40k faction because um, we can talk about that some more. We can talk about this Primark thing more. It's, it's just funny, goofy stuff. I certainly also, I don't want to make anybody uncomfortable if this is a weird topic for jokes. Let's see if anybody is on that we can uh, raid. Otherwise, I'm going to go try to get some work done today. I sold something on eBay, so I gotta pack that up, so that's exciting. And otherwise, this afternoon, check out my other, one of my other shows, Myths and Video Games, over on the Pete Wiz channel. That'll be this afternoon at 3 p.m. Pacific. <laughs> so again, slightly different time. We're gonna continue on with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, looking at the 
uh, historical and mythological content in that game. I'm very excited. That game is super cool. Uh, I had to cancel almost at the last minute last week, but um, but we're back. We're back, baby. Uh, which is the most OP faction that one-shots everything? Well, I mean, <laughs> that's debatable, but that's certainly certainly something that uh, some people would, would want to be interested in. I like this hand. The difference, so a knight's typically... Well, some knights have both of these, but on a lot of other knights you pick which melee weapon you want. And the main difference is the damage output is it's about the same. Using the hand, you can do a little bit more damage, but you have a minus one to hit. It's a little bit harder to hit with a hand than it is with a giant sword. But certain occasions when you do hit with the hand, you can do additional damage by... Essentially, whatever you're hitting, you're grabbing, and then you can chuck it and do some more cool effects with it. But it's harder to hit with it. So that's kind of the trade-off. Or like I said, there's some knights that have both. You're full-on melee. Yes! Throw those. Smash a tank and then throw it. Uh, Alright. No raiding. I'm just going to let you guys, everybody go. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I, I love, I, I, we got some stuff done, but I mainly, I love all the conversation, talking about cool stuff. Uh, yeah, we got the, I'm, I'm really happy that we got the shoulders done and figured out. I'm going to go and get all my magnets and then uh, work on doing that. Yeah, because once the, once the magnet is done here, you know, I'll be able to, this will be, all I have to do to finish the chain sword arm is just to put the right magnet inside and close that up and then that'll be done so that's cool there are a couple of fiddly bits with the gauntlet arm just the upper arm has a lot of like wires and stuff but certainly nothing difficult and then we'll start on all of the gun arms which yes as zardoz said there it's a little bit more complicated with how things work and how to magnetize it um I have to decide if I'm actually going to go the magnet route or if I'm going to try to do the tube route, which is easier, but not as sturdy. And again, if I'm going to be using... I'm going to figure out some way to use these. I'm going to need more stability. So we'll figure it out. It'll be fun. We'll keep going. So thanks, everybody. Tune in later today on the Pete Wiz channel for Myths and Video Games. Otherwise, I will be back on Friday with Figure Friday. Um, I don't know. We might do some more of this, or we'll look at toys. We'll see. Either way, it'll be great. All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Goodbye.